everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go over this wax melter that I have behind me here. Um, it's a nice wax melter, especially if you are getting into candle making or you're already a candle maker. Um, I'm gonna go over just a tutorial of how I used it and what I thought about it, and I'll give you my review. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kayla. I make videos all about concrete, candles, and crafts. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the new videos I post in the future. So this wax melter right behind me, I'm going to go over how I used it. You'll see a little bit more of the little features it has. I really like it because it's tall. Um, I do have another wax melter that I really like as well. However, it is a little bit wider. It does take up more space. Um, and this one I really like, and I'll just say this right off the bat, because on the inside it actually has a way for the wax to drain out um, so you don't have any wax on the bottom the other one that i use if you've seen my videos before i tip it <laughs> to get the wax to come out so that is one feature right off the bat that i noticed that i absolutely loved um, but we're going to go step by step using it i'm going to show you some different features it has i will put the link in the in the description box below so if you do want to find it you can find that Let's go ahead and jump into the video and I'll show you how I used it. All right, so this is the wax warmer. It has three settings, heating, insulation, and standby. I will go over those in the video. This is what you pull on to make the wax come out. And then this is the little temperature gauge where you can set um, what temperature you'd like. I like this one because it does offer a lower temperature for those more natural waxes. Now on the inside, you just twist the lid and pull up. They have a hole here that actually drains out so you don't have to tip the container at all to get all the wax out, which is really helpful. That is definitely a feature I like. On my other one, I do have to tip it. Um, so I love that they created that for this wax melter. This will hold five liters of wax. Inside the box with the wax melter came these wicks, wick stickers, and wick holders, uh, which are very helpful, especially if you're starting off. And then you came with a nice stirring spoon, and then a manual, so you know how to use it, and any questions can be answered in here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off. I use Golden Wax 464. This is 100% soy wax. You can order this on Candle Science or some local candle stores may sell them. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the wax warmer and then I will be going over kind of the red, yellow, green lights that they have on the side here uh, to let you know what those mean as well. So plug in and then you're going to flip the switch on. You're gonna see heating. It is gonna to go to standby soon um, when you put the wax in there before it starts heating up. So you will see that switch, it just switched there. Um, so green means it's just standing by waiting for you to pour the wax in. I use these little plastic bowls uh, to pour the wax. It makes it a lot easier for me um, than trying to scoop it out really with anything else. And again, this will hold five liters. I'm just gonna do a few scoops here, um, just because I'm doing one candle. And this is definitely more wax than I need, um, but what I usually do with my wax melters is I leave some wax in there, just because I make candles so often, um, I don't really have to worry about it being in there for too long. And then you want to throw the top back on when you're done and then set your, your temperature here. So I use 100% soy wax, so I'm going to be setting it to 185. So we have it at 180 here. Um, I usually put 180 just in case. I don't really want it to get too much hotter than 185, um, but we can check with our thermometer. And then as you can see, it's on standby, it's just waiting, and then it's going to switch to heating here right in a second. So as you can see, now it's heating, and then when it goes yellow to insulation, that means it's just keeping it warm for you. It's ready to go. All right, so it is still melting here. 
I just wanted to show you kind of the process of how this melts the wax. So once it gets to insulation here, it's actually going to be using the heat on the inside just to keep it at the same temperature. So this is ready to go. So I'm just gonna stir this a little bit just to make sure that everything is well mixed. And I always put the spoons I use or anything that has wax on it on something other than the counter because you can get wax on the counter. Um, it's not too hard to clean off, but just a little side note there. All right, so as you can see, um, the spigot there, it does drip a couple times, and you'll see this in the video, which is completely normal. Um, but I put a paper towel. You can either put it on the counter. Um, I put it on the floor just because I need a little bit more space to pour the wax into the pitcher. Um, so I just put the paper towel right on the floor to catch the wax. Go ahead and zero out your scale. And then you're just gonna go ahead and pour the wax in there. Now, this container to the right of the wax melter takes about 11 ounces of wax um, and one ounce of fragrance oil. I do close to 10%. Um, that is one of my concrete containers, so if you are interested in how to make those, I will post below a video on how to make those concrete containers. Now, if you pour too much wax in the pitcher, that's totally fine. That's why I love these wax melters. So that way you can just pour right back in the top and you don't have any wasted wax. So again, we're just trying to get it down to 11 so that way we don't have too much wax in there. All right, so we're gonna let this cool off a little bit before we put the fragrance oil in there. As you can see, it's really easy to wipe up as long as you get it when it's hot. Um, if it does dry, it does take a little bit more elbow grease, but not too bad. All right, so what we're gonna do is turn off the wax melter and unplug it. Um, always unplug and turn it off when you're done to make sure that it's not running still. So while we're waiting for the wax to cool down, we're gonna go ahead and do our wicks. So these are actually wicks that I cut off of another wick um, that I used for containers. So I always save them. And then I buy these little bottoms. So basically I'm using one wick for two different candles. So I make my own wicks um, from the leftover ones that I cut off. So you're just gonna take your wick stickers, place them on the bottom of these tabs, and you can get these tabs at any candle store. Place your little leftover wick in there. Use some needle nose pliers and just squeeze it tight. And then you have a whole nother wick. So I usually get six inch uh, wicks from Candle Science, so that way I can reuse them for two candles. And sometimes I'm even able to reuse them three times um, if I have like a tea light or something that I'm making. So for the three wicks, I put one in the middle and then I just put the other two on the opposite sides. And you can buy these pre-wicked. Uh, Again, these are just leftover wicks that I cut off from a, another candle, um, but the ones that I do buy are pre-tabbed already. Um, and for your reference to these wicks, the size is CD3 uh, that I use with these oval containers. All right, so that is all wicked and we are ready to pour. So now that the wax has cooled, I usually pour my fragrance oil in around 165. You don't want it too hot or too cold or else the fragrance oil won't bind to the wax. So we're using this fresh coffee scent and it has kind of like a mocha scent to it. it smells really good. And um, if you've seen any of my other videos, I just use a normal um, kitchen spoon to stir this. Um, it works the best for me personally, but you can really stir it with whatever. You could even use that spoon um, that came in the box for the wax melter. So make sure you stir really, really well to make sure the fragrance oil binds with the wax. You want to make sure that there's no... Um, 
it can look kind of, you can see the fragrance oil kind of moving around in the wax if it didn't bind correctly. So you can see it's pretty clear, so we're good to go. All right, so I usually let my wax cool to about 140 to 135. Um, it's really a difference of wax. So if you have different wax, it's gonna be different temperatures. But for my 100% soy wax, 135 to 140 is a really good temperature to pour at. I've also poured, poured lower too. Um, I've even poured around 120 um, and that's totally fine. And then to keep these wicks in place, because they, we want them standing up, I do use popsicle sticks. Um, so some of them you can buy with holes in it. I wanted to show you those today too. Um, and then the other ones, so these ones with the holes I buy from Candle Science and then the ones without, I literally just buy off Amazon. So either work, I use both. I just happen to have one with a hole in it and I wanted to show you guys that option too. So for this particular container, it usually takes about two hours for the wax to dry. Uh, once it's dried, you can go ahead and trim the wicks. Um, I use a metal wick trimmer to trim these wicks. And all you do is just hold the top of the wick and cut. You want to cut about a quarter of an inch. Um, leave a quarter of an inch there so that way it's not too close to the wax and it's not too tall. And there you have it, a beautiful concrete candle um, made with an awesome wax melter. Um, I would definitely highly recommend this wax melter, it was awesome. So that was my video on this wax melter um, and my review was it is awesome, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. So I definitely will be using this in the future. I will keep my other wax melter and use it, it is nice to have too. Um, but I did like this one because again, it doesn't take up as much space it has um, that part that can drain out. And I really did like, as I pointed out in the video earlier, how the side of it, the temperature, you can actually put it lower. Um, because with my wax that I use, I use soy wax, and it has a lower melting temperature and I don't need to heat it as much as um, say paraffin wax. So it is a lot better to have that option so that way I don't have to continually check it and make sure that it's not getting too hot. I hope this video was helpful for all of you, and if it was, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That way I know this type, type of content you like to see. And then if you have any questions, please post them in the comment box below. I'd be happy to get back to you and answer any questions that you have. I hope to see you all in the next video, and thanks for watching.